Hi there, my name is Allie and I'm Living Chronic Faith. Thanks for stopping by. So we all know that the coronavirus uh, is affecting people all over the world. And we've all heard that uh, people living with chronic conditions are at higher risk for susceptibility. But one thing that we're not talking about quite as much is how this is impacting people with chronic illness and pain conditions emotionally. The pandemic has brought with it a lot of fear and concern for our own well-being, for the well-being of those that we love, uh, for our financial status and our ability to provide for ourselves, even the availability of medications that we need. There is a lot to be concerned about. However, in that process, I'm concerned about how that emotional draining can affect you physically. So I want to make sure that you are not getting run down, that you're doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself physically and emotionally. So the first thing is make sure that you are eating well, sleeping well, staying on top of your meds, doing the things you need to do to make yourself feel well physically. That's the first thing, and it's something that you can control. So if you need an extra nap, or if you need to sleep an extra hour, do what you can to build that time in so that you can get the proper rest so that your body isn't run down, so that you stay as well as you possibly can, and you give your body all the ammunition that you can to fight. Number two, think about someone else. After you've taken care of yourself and you're in a pretty good situation, do what you can for others. If that means that you reach out to a senior citizen uh, that you know maybe doesn't have a lot of relatives or a lot of visitors, then give them a call. You know, send them an email or whatever it is that you have at your um, at your fingertips to do. Make sure that you are doing what you can do uh, for others. If you can, if you're in a financial position where you can make a contribution uh, to a charity that is supporting people affected by COVID-19. Consider doing that. Uh, if you are part of a church and they're doing things uh, for people in the community, consider contributing in that way. Now, this does not mean go put on a mask and run out and start trying to save the world. It doesn't mean that at all. But it does mean that there are things that you can do right there where you are that are necessary, that will really help someone. Um, I saw a website recently where you could donate five bucks and that would buy a meal for uh, a first responder. And while one meal doesn't fix the world, it certainly goes a long way to building up their resistance uh, to what they're facing. So just make sure that you're doing what you can do to support someone else. And then with that, number three is make sure that you're staying in contact with your support system. You need people around you right now. People that love you, people that care about you, people that understand what you're going through and that are concerned for you. So even though it's already difficult not to be isolated because it's hard for people to relate to your circumstances, now it's even more important that we stay connected with people who care about us and people that have our best interests at heart. So make sure that now is not the time that you isolate. Now is not the time that you push people away. And it can be easy to do that because of, you know, the emotional stuff going on with you. But make an effort to reach out to your support team, someone that you can talk to and share with them your feelings and your thoughts and what you're going through. And they can do the same and you can be there for one another. And then, of course, number four, it's find something productive to occupy your time. Now, I don't know anybody that doesn't have a project around the house that they've been waiting to get to or that you don't have something that you've been wanting to work on but you didn't have time. Or maybe there's a skill you wanna learn, or maybe you wanna learn a language. All these things are available and accessible online. Make sure that you're taking full advantage of them. If you've got recipes that you clipped some time ago and you've always wanted to try them but you just didn't have time, pull those recipes out. Find something that you can do with someone that you care about. It's a lot more fun when you do it together. Take this time and do something that adds value to your life. Because at the end of all this, and it will end, you have the opportunity right now to make this something that benefited you. Yes, COVID-19 has taken from us and it's frustrating, but we don't have to let it be a negative thing 
in our history. We can remember this season as the time when we learned how to do a new skill or the time when we got closer with our families or the time when we got serious about meal prepping or whatever the case may be. But let this be something that you look back on with gratitude for the opportunity that you took to do something to improve your life. I wish you the best and I will talk to you very, very soon. Before we go, can I pray with you? Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to make this season something beneficial. Help us to do that. Help us to find ways to be productive, to think of others, to take better care of ourselves and to connect with people that care about us. Help us to make this the best time possible with the situation that we have dealt to deal with. We thank you for your favor and for your mercy and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, guys, I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves and remember to keep living chronic faith. Bye-bye.